Gospel according to Mark. The Pharisee approached Jesus and asked, Is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He said to them in reply, What did Moses command you? They replied, Moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and miss her. But Jesus told them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, he brought you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother, and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. In the house, the disciples again questioned Jesus about this. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And people were bringing children to him that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he became indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me, do not prevent them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Amen, I say to you, whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it. Then he embraced them and blessed them, placing his hands on them. The Gospel of the Lord Reading the Gospel today, I pray about an issue that causes suffering in the world. It makes many families broken. Many children live without parental love and leads to negative consequences. It is divorce. Divorce has existed throughout the ages and it is still a painful and unending problem. History has proven that divorce existed even with Jesus' contemporaries. And before that, Moses' time also struggled with this problem. However, it is more serious for the people today. They are losing the sense of sin that according to Pope St. John Paul II describes, the world is affected by a culture of death. Today, under the influence of this culture, the foundation of the family and material happiness is being turned upside down. It shakes the social foundation. Why is this so? Because people's hearts are hardened, and people want to live their own selfish preferences. The phenomenon of divorce, separation, and abortion, therefore, more and more common and prevalent. It makes the lives of many people difficult, especially the children. But many nations still allow or somehow support the phenomenon as a law for the country. In today's Gospel, 
The pharmacists bring up the issue of divorce to Jesus, not to gain more knowledge or pursue his opinion, but to set a trap for him. Because according to them, Jesus will not easily escape their snare. If Jesus answers yes, then he will against God's commandment. If he answer no, then Jesus himself will violate what Moses prescribed. Jesus wisely reminds them in God's intention when he created man. From the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. Jesus reminds them that the stability of marriage is not due to the will of man or of the couple, but first and foremost, the will of God. A family has only one wife and one husband. God has joined a man and women in marriage as an act that shows this is not a childishness or something to play with. This is a serious matter. Human being must not separate the wife and husband. Humankind has no right to disregard this life or to deviate from the commandments established by God. Thereby, do not divide what God has joined together and do not test Him. Faithfulness and stability in marriage are not only the will of God, but also one of the conditions for people to be happy. Family is the first school to educate children to become good people. It is a family where husband and wife are faithful to each other, that children will learn lessons about tolerance sharing, love, and forgiveness. It is also from there that they will learn a lesson in humility, recognize their own limitations, be ready to accept the guidance of wise elders, and know how to support those around them in need. I am very proud of my family, a pious Catholic family. My parents love each other very much, and they gave us an education in love and charity. Because I know that to have this happy family, my parents must know how to cultivate faithfulness between them by forgiveness themselves, putting aside each person's personal pride and living according to the example of Jesus every day. As you may be aware, the family is the basic unit for building a society. The stability and development of society completely depends on the stability and morality of each family. To have a peaceful and happy family is indispensable for the faithfulness and loyalty of the couple in married life. Moreover, from the perspective of faith, the fidelity and stability of marriage 
have a special value because it is also the eternal will of God. Therefore, it is necessary to be serious, mature, and responsible for the choices, decisions, and actions to make a marriage happy and lasting. If anyone on purpose betrays his wife or her husband, betrays the family happiness that he or she has decided, that person also begins to counteract God and knowingly go against God's will. In other words, when insulting marriage, it is not only offending the people who involved, but also offending God who created and blessed this marriage and made it good and holy. Indeed, God is very wise and merciful when setting people to a good married life. He has joined them in that goodness with a permanent union. He never forces a male and female into this bondage. On the contrary, He has created opportunities for them to live in harmony and happiness with each other. Jesus draws conclusions and reaffirms equality of rights and duties between husband and wife. <clears throat> Imagine if he doesn't command them to be serious, responsible and mature with their choice and action. Where will their marriage life go? And what will it be like? If God doesn't buy men by the law of permanent marriage, how many broken hearts betrayed by love? And how many parentless children will appear ours? Families should be always be a home of love, especially for the Catholic families. We should be a real home where everyone in us feels loved, comforted, and happy that we can't find anywhere outside of the family. Both marriage and celibacy are vocations of the service of the kingdom of God, and not at the service of selfish interests. They are choices or gateways to happiness. Catholic marriage, with the commandments of indissolubility, is certainly a guarantee of that happiness. If we follow and voluntarily comply with what God has arranged that, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. The relationship of marriage between men and women can be compared with the relationship between God and man. In the scriptures, Jesus likens himself to the bridegroom while the church is likened to the pride. God always has been faithful to His covenant with mankind. He wants us to be faithful to the covenant that we have made with Him through the sacraments that we receive daily. Today, let us pray that we may be faithful to our vocation, not only in marriage, but also in the covenant that we have made through the sacraments we have received. May God bless husbands and wives who know how to always love each other in loyalty, trust, patience, and forgiveness, and with God's help, be faithful with their pledge, faithful to their chosen one in love, so that the world may recognize God's love.
Amém.